described it perfectly, general studies major. It is, um, I mean, you can see, like, uh, I mean, you know the players. The guys that are going against me are Harold and, and Bud and Weave. Like, they've been here. So I, I know them as rushers, but right now it's not worth even mentioning how they're rushing the passer. What about Weaver, though, just coming back healthy and stuff? I mean, just even seeing him run around, what do you think about his? We're in a jog-through mentality out there. So to be honest with you, um, I probably should ask them. They, I mean, they look great, I guess. Harold looks a little slower. He's got a lot of money in his pockets now, so. How do you feel about Dylan's development so far? You, I won't know. Uh, Dylan seems like he's a really like gotten the playbook down a little bit better. Uh, his conditioning's a whole lot better than it was. Um, but yeah, I won't really know about him as a football player until pads are on. Dylan doesn't talk like a guy. Who... He's an offensive lineman. He he's, a, he's your standard offensive lineman. He doesn't say like. <laughs> We ask him about the position. He doesn't say, I'm going to support the five, and I really want to be the right tackle. He, yeah. doesn't, he doesn't talk like a guy who's determined to win the job, which leads some of us, anyway, to yeah. perceive him as not hungry or determined yeah. to live up to his draft slot and stuff. Tell us I think that's, that's probably putting a little more weight in your job than you probably should when it comes to your guys' opinions of what you guys really think, right? Dylan doesn't care what you guys are writing about him. He's, he's Dylan. The kid's from Minnesota. Like they, Nobody they Minnesota. drink in the winter time. They hang out. They're salt of the earth people. Like Dylan's not. He's not me. Or right? I just like loud and obnoxious. Like Dylan is, comes in. He works. He says exactly what Rabel wants him to say, and he boogies. He's your standard offensive lineman. And because he doesn't say, oh, it's the it's the most important thing in my life to me right now. It's listen. Like he works in his effort on the field that I've seen. He absolutely cares. What are some of the things that you could do? It was decent. That was a nice little trap question. With whoever's next to you at left guard, like how can you at this point develop that chemistry, that relationship like you yeah. had with, with Sapphire? It just depends on who it is. Um, different guys have different skill sets. Uh, if Jamarco's playing next to me, learning him a little bit better, uh, what is he good at and what is maybe he needs areas of improvement that I can help him out with, uh, whether we're in combination together or pass pro and what he's good at, how he likes to set and stuff like that. I can help him in certain ways. Um, with Brew, Brew's a, he's an athletic individual. He's fast. He's got a, a um, he's a strong guy. So, um, this it's figuring out who does what well, and then working with him that way. I mean, you won't know until pads are up. Is that kind of like an added layer of responsibility that you know you have to take on? No, I mean, this is I've been doing this for nine years in the same place. Like I'm, any responsibility they give me, I'm more than happy to take. And. I think those guys are responsible for themselves. It's not my job to win them the job or make them play well. Um, but when we go out there, five guys on the left side of the line, me and whoever my left guard is going to be on starting day, need to be able to know what the strength and weaknesses of each other are. How's a brew make up for lack of size with this morning? He's extremely fast and athletic. Oh, it's a lot. I'm just looking forward to picking up where we left off at and keep this thing rolling. Nico, where can the front four take another step? What, what do you think you guys have to work on even after all the success you guys had last uh, year? Just getting better with communicating. Just knowing where we're at, knowing what we got to do, and just work on our games and stunts and just be on point on everything. This is the time of year people like to have polls and rankings and all that sort of stuff. Where, where do you think this defense can be? Top 10, top 5? Uh, the sky's the limit for this defense. Well, I mean, would you be disappointed if it was anything less than? Still got to put working on the field. Yeah. Just, when you look back at last year, your way you played, what do you like? What are some things you think you can even get better at? Um, I mean, I bought in and played my role to my best of my ability. Um, just, just work, just buy in and keep being the best teammate. That's all I can do. What do you do at this stage of your career to get better? I mean, do you change anything? Do you just keep kind of improving on what you do? Uh, How, what's the process? Like? Uh, just trying to stay in shape. Just, uh, change up my workouts. Uh, change over to CrossFit. You know, boxing a little bit. Just trying to stay in shape. The most I can do. How much CrossFit? How much boxing do you do? Um, weekly, weekly, you know, every day of the week. How much the boxing help you? Oh, a lot. Conditioning is a lot. How'd you get into that? Uh, just with Rob Mathis, we just work our hands with pass rush, and I just kind of bought into boxing. What do you specifically get out of the mini camp stuff when there's no pads, none, none of the contact stuff? What do you um, get? Just playbooks, uh, learning the plays, um, knowing where to be, just, you know, getting used to being back on the field. I think we're at a great spot. I mean, like I said, I've been I've been here the whole time. I've been with KB. I watched him when he played with uh, Kenny, and then now I'm playing with him now. So I think me and him got a good relationship, and we complement each other very well. Amaya, just a new new season for you. Obviously, in, in a bigger leadership mm -hmm. role. Just how have you grown? I guess in the past year or so. Um, mentally, you know, just making sure that my communication is good. You know, I'm understanding not just my role, but you know, the cornerbacks' role, the linebackers' role. Just being an extra coach on the field to help my team my teammates out, and you know, they have confidence in me. 
so special about the secondary early? You can kind of see mm -hmm. the, the depth, A, that yeah. there is there, but just the, the type of talent that you have. Yeah, I mean, we got great guys, great talent, like you said, and then, you know, they're all smart. You know, we got guys in the room that are willing to learn and want to learn, and, you know, they're coming out, they're asking questions, and I'm helping them out, and they're helping me out. So we're all just complimenting each other, and we all just want to improve and just help the defense. How nice is that to know, though, coming into the season, you have that depth, you have those mm -hmm. guys already with experience mm -hmm. with you, KB, you, you got Christian Fulton, cornerback room. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's great depth because it allows us to get into the playbook, you know, a little deeper. We don't have to, you know, we start with the base stuff, but now we already know what, you know, things that we've seen that hurt us during the season that are coming up now in practice. We can already talk about it without having to, you know, go over and over and over again. We already have learned it and know what we're going, what, know what's going on. Yeah, you know, wait for the off season. You kind of get to miss being around, you know, the team, you know, the camaraderie that you, uh, you know, see out here, the competition. You know, I, I definitely missed that. You made the decision to not come until this week. What were you doing? And, and I'm sorry. What did you say? <laughs> On the field until oh, okay, I got you guys. What, what's kind of your philosophy to the offseason at this point of your career, and why did you make that decision? I mean, I don't really have too much to say on that, really. I mean, I just decided to come when I came. So. Well, a lot of people do that, but like, how do you get yourself ready so that you don't miss a beat when you get out here? Uh, I mean, for me, it's kind of natural to like, like jump right into it. I mean, that's kind of goes to how I play anyway. Like, you know, like get on the field is real natural for me to like play instinctively and get back into the groove of things really quickly. How much do you figure it's going to help you, Zach, get more of an off season this year after coming in, you know, middle of the season basically last year? Uh, oh yeah, it's definitely a lot better. You know, being in here in the very beginning to actually be around the guys from the from the jump is like instead of like you said coming in the middle of the season and trying to hurry up and rush to learn everything like just on the spot is definitely uh, I see it, it's going to help a lot how in my you, game. How you think you played last year when you came in here? When you uh, I think I, uh, I came in playing uh, pretty good. Definitely the uh, things I can improve upon, like uh, within pass coverage, even uh, within the run game. Things uh, uh, that's it's gonna help with this off season c coming into it. You know, from the from the get go, from the jump. Oh uh, man, you know we take a lot of pride in our room. We have a lot of dogs, especially in our room, with, from Bud to H to the Nico Weaver. You know what I mean? And then, you know, the rookie David, you know what I'm saying? And uh, Justin Lawler, you know what I'm saying, the Super Bowl champion. So we got a lot of competition in our room, and, you know what I'm saying, anybody that gets out there is ready to compete. You talked about how hungry the squad is. What do you do between that? I mean, do you get away for a little bit? Do you start training immediately after? How I mean, you, this stretch? you know, everybody has their own certain routine that they go through. Um, me personally, you know, I just try to take a little time off, get my body back right, and once I'm good, get back at it. What's the, uh, I think it was Brian who said at the podium yesterday that he trusts everybody in the room to handle their business. Oh, for sure. But when you come back on whatever. You got to be ready. You got to be ready. We're all grown men now. You know what I'm saying? This isn't college anymore where coaches are policing you and trying to make sure that you're good. Nah, we're all grown men, and you know what this is. This is National Football League, so you got to come prepared. What's the belief of this defense? Top 10, top 5? Man, number one. That's the goal for this year, number one. Uh, I mean, everything just happens quicker. You just got to be on the same page and play fast because, I mean, there's not a lot of space down here. So whatever you're going to do, it has to speed up. And, uh, yeah. How much, of a, how much of a weapon can a tight end be uh, in the red zone for that very purpose? Sure. Any pass catcher, receiver, backs. I mean, uh, we have a very balanced offense where we can attack with any position over the pass. You had Dennis Kelly even catching tugs here. So, I mean, there are a lot of, a lot of athletes we have in the room. Just, you know, when it's your opportunity, uh, do your best to go up and get it. Austin, what do the next couple of weeks look like for you leading up to training camp? Just training, training, uh, working on my craft, and yeah, it, same as everybody else, just uh, working hard, uh, kind of more shifting the focus to kind of more sports specific stuff. Um, yeah. And did the last couple of weeks this off season meet your expectations in terms of what you were looking for? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, every day I get to come out here and play a child's game is is a blessing. So, yeah. I feel so much better. I mean, got a lot more reps, got a lot more opportunities. That's everything that I asked, that I wanted to ask for. It's for me to get a chance for me to be out there with the guys and just show myself and play as hard as I can. So, you've got a couple, I don't know, a few more days, another week, a couple weeks before you truly get some time off. Do you take this time to like grind even harder? Do you take a little bit of a breather, or how do you approach what happens between now and coming back? You got to grind harder. I mean, something that Coach Rabel said is that if you come back to uh, camp, fall camp, the same way that you were during the spring at OTAs and everything like that, that you did something wrong. You need to be better coming into camp because that means you've been training harder. That means you've been going through your plays and things like that. What do you do to get there? 
training, like conditioning every single day, working out harder. I'm um, going through my playbook on my own, talking to my coach, trying to call him up, trying to ask him questions about plays, things that just doesn't hit me right, whatever it is for me to make sure that when I come into camp, I know as much as I can so I can come out rocking and rolling. I know you said you feel so much better now than you did when you began. Is it almost amazing the learning curve that is so steep that you have to pick up so quickly? But you do because that's what it takes. I mean, it's huge. I mean, like once you're in a crucible, you know, like iron sharp as irons and things like that. So like when you're out here and you're training hard with other guys, you just kind of get up to that level of standard and that level of like expertise, you know, because you got to compete. And if you don't compete, you're going to fall to the wayside. So that's kind of how I feel. OTA is a rookie mini camp, and then mandatory mini camp is great because we all have to rise up to the occasion, especially when the older guys are here. You don't the get dynamic here like with, uh, with your rookie class, specifically the draft class. Like you're picking each other up on days like that where you have to do that. Or what's that like? Yeah, I mean, like we're it's our class, you know. So we care about each other. We learn each other's names and things like that. We're all friends. We all try to hang out outside of football as well. But like on the field, we make sure that everyone's doing their part. We hold each other accountable, and that we're striving to be the best that we can be. I mean, you got to build your own self-confidence, you know, like, I mean, it's great to have the line room that we have with Taylor and all the older guys that they always try to instill confidence in the younger guys. But at the end of the day, you have to believe in yourself and believe in what's being what's being taught and believe in the culture of the program. I know the weather's nothing new at time, Ohio, too. How'd you get to the last couple of days? Well, it's hot in Florida as well. Yeah. So, but, um, you know, you got you to gotta be conditioned got to hydrate so we have a great nutritional staff with Lauren here she'd make sure that everyone knew about the weather we knew about how hot it was going to be but we can't let things like weather and fatigue dampen our play we need to make sure that we always compete to the highest standard no matter the weather no matter the conditions you crush it crush the sun today yeah every single day we got to crush it I, I think the biggest goal is just to try to push ourselves you know just try to just try to push ourselves to be better you know I don't think anybody want to see the number one defense, or but I think we do strive to be the best we could be. When you get Jeff and Tanico back in the building this week, how much does that uh, ramp up the camaraderie slash competition in this room? You know, uh, bringing those type of guys back always brings a lot of uh, a lot of information. You know, you know they've been playing on this team for a while, been in the system for a while, and you know they're always trying to coach the younger guys, including myself, just the. Uh, the to uh, be more attentive and just be more aware of like what's going on. So it's really good to have them back and to push us competitively too. Coach T said it's amazing the depth we have up front on this mm -hmm. team. I, you've got to feel that. How do you carve your own role out amongst that? Well, you know, I just, you know, what I do is I just go out there, play hard, and, you know, I let the chips fall where they may. You know, I just want to be a part of the team, so I just go out there and play hard. Your sign is an undrafted free agent first to start your career, and then, um, you know, how do you – how do you build a spot for yourself? How do you make yourself stand out from everybody else to find a role on the team? Well, I just do all the little things, you know. Just pay attention a little bit more, study a little bit more harder. And, you know, I just go out there, like I said, just go out there, play hard. Just play hard, and the coach is going to take notice when you out there balling. When I was younger, I probably did think like that while I wasn't working, but that's just a natural distraction. Um, as I learned throughout my years and with my teams, is just control what I can control. And if, if they're confident with me going out there, then I'll go out there. If they don't want me out there, they don't want me out there. So I just continue to just keep working and keep trying to get better every day. You've made, obviously, a lot of plays during this offseason. I mean, how have things gone so far in your mind? I feel like they're going well. Uh, I keep the same mindset, just keep building each day. And what I did yesterday doesn't matter. It's about what I do today and the next day. What do you think you have to do on a consistent level to prove that you belong and, and to earn playing time? Uh, just uh, assignment sound football, uh, stay on top of my details and keep making plays and I feel like I have an excellent shot to be here. How do you rate yourself as a blocker? That's a big deal for wide receivers here. I feel like I can block fine. Um, I'm going to get the job done. I'm going to finish. I'm going I'm to do what I have to do to get my man. What, what about the special teams aspect? You know, for a guy where you'll probably make the roster, that's that's pretty important. Is that something you know you start to like weigh into the equation? Special teams always been important, especially since since Cincinnati, since New York, it's always been the emphasis. Uh, been in the same position, so I had a lot of years to work the craft and to learn and learn different techniques, learn different systems. So, special teams is a very important phase of football. So, there's no 
offense, defense, special teams is the margin that helps you win games. Field and Ryan certainly does that. Coach Downing said he's even louder this year. Have you noticed that a little bit? He's taken on even more leadership in a real positive way, so it's been awesome. I think the players really respond well to him. And uh, it's been good. Besides that, that, he spoke it yesterday again that it was really tough for him after the Bengals lost. He was in dark places, had to work over that. Have you seen a little bit of a different Ryan since he's come back in any way? You know, Ryan's always been really focused and driven, um, prepared every day. It's really been similar. Um, and there hasn't been any change in that at all, really. With him, with the experience that Ryan's got, though, is there when you get to a certain point in your career, does that maybe allow him to, to work on different things or try to fine-tune some areas of his game? That's probably a really good question for Ryan. Uh, we just continue to you know, work on, on staying consistent with everything we do, and there's no one who wants to be more consistent than Ryan. <laughs> and uh, in a really good way. He's just so fun to coach and be around. He's such a professional. It's been great. When you did that period you did yesterday down in that red zone at the combo rounds, how, how much, I don't say mastery, I know it's an install that they're going to many kids, mm -hmm. but how much better should the quarterbacks be at that, out of that period? Out of the red zone period? Out of that combo round period. Yeah, no, that's a good question, Paul. Um, you know, when you get down into the low red area, there's a lot of timing down there. I mean, there's timing in, in every facet of our passing game, but down there, you really have to be on the same page because things happen quickly. It's almost like basketball where you're distributing the ball down into the paint, you know, uh, to, to shoot a basket. I'm not very good at basketball, but don't know a lot about it, but probably similar. Um, but, yeah, that's critical. There's a lot of communication down there. That drill you're talking about, Paul, for sure. You know, I think Des has done an excellent job of, of working. You can see the growth, you can see the improvement. I would say the same about Racy. You just, um, he just hasn't been able to be a part of some of the team periods, but he's done a great job. Um, now it's just about getting it done in game situations. What do you guys do with the trailing Rob? Hasn't been able to get out there as often as he'd like, I'm sure. But what do you guys do to try to keep him up to up to progress? And, and uh, He's getting, he's getting touched from a lot of different angles, man. We're doing everything we can to keep him abreast. He's done a great job of responding to everything we've given him. Um, and uh, he's eager to learn and, and eager to get to work. Well, he wants to, obviously would want to be out here. How does mm -hmm. he kind of handle the patience part of it and knowing you know, my time is coming? Well, it's, it's tough when you're young. And when you're young, you typically don't have a whole lot of patience. But he understands it's a process, and uh, he's trying to control the things that he can control. How's Josh Malone done? He's a guy that's kind of bounced mm -hmm. around the league a little bit. Just how's he done since he's been here? And does a guy come in with a you know reputation preceding him, or does he come in with a fresh slate when he gets here? How's that no, done? he definitely came in with a fresh slate. I, I can tell you that I am uh, ecstatic about the progress he's made and, and, and really his development and, and where he's at right now. Um, you know, at the, and at the end of the day, we all know that this game is all about what you do with the pads on. So uh, if he could take what he's done here um, and, and do it in training camp, um, you know, he's going to have a leg up for sure. What about Phillips and what you saw from him when he, when he first got here to maybe now? Got a long ways to go, obviously. Mm -hmm. what, where, is, where is he making strides or what does he need to do to find a spot? Well, I think he's uh, he's starting to understand, uh, you know, kind of some of the fundamentals that he's got to develop and, and how he's going to have to play at this league, play in this league in, in, in regards to being able to create separation and all those things um, and to be effective on a consistent basis. Uh, those are things he's figuring out right now. But uh, the kid's got really good short area quickness and he's got a lot of tools to, to build on. You know, I think it's probably – you know, we could say it's a little bit harder in the years past with no off season and all that stuff, but that's that's really just part of pro football, though. With all the injuries you have and everything else, these guys got to be able to rotate and move around and play with different people. You talked about uh, uh, yeah, Nate getting the most out of his body type. Aaron, similar in that regard, not the biggest guy, but how does he sort of compensate? For yeah, I mean, you know, Aaron is um, is an unbelievable athlete, and so. You know, he has a really, a, a, a really um, unbelievable way to kind of recover when he gets stuck in maybe some bad positions and all that stuff. But um, you know, for him, it's it's getting as big as he can, but not losing that part of his game, and then just being consistent from a technique standpoint. I think he's come a long way, and 
I'm excited to see where he goes. When you're a smaller guard like Aaron or even like uh, Marco, who's about you know getting the same weight and all, yeah, going back to my high school days and stuff, a lighter guard usually does a lot of pulling and using that athleticism. Is that an advantage those guys can do? Well, I just think athleticism in general is is good. Um, but obviously, you know, the lighter, the smaller guys, we got to compensate in other ways, you know. And and like anything else in this league, it's about matchups. So I don't know if, if schematically pulling's better than something else as much as it is is figuring out where your matchups, where you can maybe be better than a, a less athletic guy up front, or if it's a bigger guy, figure out ways to help him when maybe uh, there's a weight disadvantage or something like that. Receiver at any position is so critical, and we always emphasize that, that no matter what we're telling our guys as coaches, um, that the relationship that trumps all of that is being on the same page with the quarterback. So the extra time they've had during special teams periods, before and after practice, constant communication, the meetings, um, I think it's going to pay real dividends once we get to the season, and they've obviously been off to a good start here so far in the offseason. Is he everything that you thought you were getting? Yeah, you know what? Having never worked with them, I, I try. I try not to set unfair expectations on anyone, whether it's a rookie we draft or sign post draft or bring in in free agency. Um, but I, I can say this: I've really enjoyed working with him. He brings a, an element to our team that's really exciting for our tight end room, and um, I'm excited to see what he can get done uh, this fall. You guys have been working on a lot of red zone stuff with the tight ends in practice. So obviously, that's a huge thing when it comes to game time. And how beneficial do you think he can be? Yeah, you know, anytime you can add a big target like Hoop down in the red zone, you know, uh, once you get in the Red zone things are going to happen faster. The windows get tighter for the quarterbacks, and when you can use a big body and a wide catch radius like he has, um, hopefully it leads to more touchdowns in the red zone. And and that's something that as we get into the season, uh, we're, we're anticipating from Hoop and and excited for what he has to our offense. With Chig and and Hooper, can that give you a certain opportunities to be able to create matchups out of a 12 or 13 package maybe that you weren't able to do in the past? Yeah, you know, that's one of the fun things about coaching tight ends here, and, and that goes back for a few years, is all the position flexibility we have and the versatility that we, we call upon all our guys to play with. Um, so when you have guys with a skill set like Hoop and a skill set like Chig to be able to mix and match guys, and like you mentioned, you know, trying to create those favorable matchups once we get into the season, it's exciting. Right now, it's just about getting a feel for the system, learning our offense so we can play guys at, at different spots. But, um, you know, the first thing we always teach our tight ends when they come here is, is they got to come here and block. So um, they got to contribute in the run game as a blocker. And once they do that, they're going to earn opportunities in the pass game. Riley Moore is somebody who had an unfortunate injury last year, but it seems like he's got some traits that would be an asset to you. What kind of stands out about him as a player? Yeah, you know, Briley brings the same work ethic every single day, and he's been working his tail off to get back. Um, really excited about him. We were excited about him last fall when we got him after the draft. And, um, you know, He's he's a guy that again I, I don't mean to sound like a broken record he's got a lot of versatility so we're excited to use him in multiple ways and um, you know like most of our guys they'll dictate the role for themselves um, they're gonna they're gonna go out and have every opportunity during, throughout the course of training camp to prove themselves and show that they can play in a variety of ways and uh, looking forward to seeing that from Briley as well. I know it's early on but how has he responded to that so far? Yeah he's been great he's been great so far um, can't ask anything more Briley he's doing everything we're asking him to do and um, he's put in the work every single day that's a great thing about him. He's the same guy every day. He's got the same great attitude, same great work ethic. He's excited for his teammates when they succeed out there on the field. And um, it was cool to see him yesterday during the red zone period celebrating some of those touchdowns with a lot of passion and energy. And uh, that's what you're going to get from Briley every day. Good, good. Good. Good to see the, the big guy uh, come back yesterday, even if he wasn't on the field. And, and maybe if you could talk about kind of, I guess, the, the weight loss that he's doing and, and what that impact might Yeah, have. I haven't seen the weights. And um, I know he looks good. I don't know what he weighs. Um, right now, um, but he's here and he's doing a good job. Kind of what we expected. You, I, I imagine you expected him to be on the field. Is, is he game? <laughs> no, he's fine. He's fine. He's doing exactly what we ask, what we're asking him to do right now. So. Why aren't you asking him to be out here like everybody else? Because that's what we're asking him to do. So he's doing just well. I promise you. What is it that he could accomplish by, by being here but not being on this? Just w watching tape uh, again and doing some of the things that we're asking him to do. Just look at tape and um, look at what he can get better at. I mean, it's it's important to be out here, but it's also important to watch tape and, and um, improve that way. So he's doing a good job. One of the things that he said he wants to improve upon is generating turnovers. Uh, is that a conversation that you guys have had, and, and what are some steps you're taking? On? Yeah, we've been um, we've been talking about that really the the whole off season, not just Jeff, but the the entire defense. Of just um, getting uh, 
it's it's not as easy as people think of getting the balls out. We've been in position to get a bunch of them out. Sometimes they they we get them out, and then the other the offense gets them back. And I mean, it's just by chance. But we're gonna keep on swinging and doing what we need to do to to try to force more takeaways. How close the tabs did you keep on Jeff and keep on the guys who weren't here during the OTAs and the voluntary portion of the offseason? We talk. I mean, we're, we talk because it's well, here, for me anyway, it's more than just football. I mean, these guys are like um, family to us. So we talk to them. We don't talk every day, but we talk to them. So it, it's been good. Given that he knows how to get himself ready and stuff, like what, what is he missing by not being out here on the field? The heat, that's about it. I mean, he won't be out here in the heat, and I will, and that's what he's missing right now. But he'll he'll be ready to go when it's time to be ready to go. Given the speed that you can go at this point, how much have you learned about your That we have um, some pretty good depth. I mean, it's a, it's a group that's played a lot of football between um, – Walker, Han, Strong, not necessarily for us, but they've played in this league. And then you throw in uh, um, Naquan and, and Tart, who's played. So uh, it's a it's a good group. I guess doing right now, it's huge. I mean, getting thrown in somewhere and halfway through the year, I mean, it's tough on anybody. But, um, you know, once Zach learns, learns exactly what's going on with the nuts and bolts, the details of the defense, I'll go to war with Zach Cunningham any day. Kind of gets his footing here in the league. Yeah, I think it's good. He came out of Tennessee, well coached, was able to play multiple positions. So we're seeing him be able to uh, retain information. We're seeing him to be able to understand our defense. And now he's just in the process of taking it from the classroom to the field now and being able to run the defense like a safety needs to. And it's a process. Uh, you know, some days are good. Other days he needs to continue to improve. But the one thing is that he's a worker. He comes in and, and uh, is prepared, and uh, it's really important to him. So we see some improvement and just want to make sure that he takes the next step, you know, once we get into camp and everything like that. What are his biggest strengths from a skill set standpoint at this point in time? Yeah. Again, I would start with the ability to play multiple positions at Tennessee and then being able to do multiple things for us here. Uh, you know, at the safety position, we ask our safeties to play man, play deep coverage, play close to the box, uh, do a lot of things, blitz. And so he is he has the skill set to do that. And now it's just the anticipation of changing defenses with motion and doing some of the things that he may not see in college now that he sees in the pros. So that's the process of him just being able to communicate our defense being able to run our defense like a safety does and that takes time and he's improving every day and so again uh, you know those are a couple things that he does well and a couple things that he can continue to improve on. What would you like about um, what, how Monty's played the last couple of years and maybe what's what's next for him how can he get better? Yeah I think the development is the thing that we like the most I think seeing him in 19 going from a guy that plays sparingly in sub to 20 playing a little bit more starting a couple games whenever Kenny was hurt and then in 21 you know being a guy besides when he was hurt um, himself for four games who was entrenched as a starter and made plays for us so we love to see the fact that he's developed and improved every year and uh, we want to see that next step we want to see him to continue to have ball production to continue to be able to blitz to be a guy uh, always around the ball and uh, you know a solid tackler and a guy that's just being able to make plays in the back end uh, you know be a great compliment to Kevin. I uh, like to see those guys working hand in hand to know what each other is doing before they even communicate with each other. Those type of things that happens whenever you start playing with a guy multiple seasons. So uh, we look forward to that. We look forward to leadership from Amani too. Uh, you know, uh, 31 shouldn't always be the one leading. And so, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're uh, looking for development and leadership, which I know that he wants to take that next step in. So all those things I think are things that he's working on and things that he's embracing. And uh, again, from his track record, you know, he's been improving every year. What do you know this year than it's been in the past? Because of yeah. well, we, depth you have there? We have a lot of young guys. You know, we got Christian that has played, Elijah that has played, but you know, we got Buster, that's the older guy in the room, but we have some younger guys. Chris Jackson's done a good job, and um, Rogers come in from the day he's been here and did a good job. So they know every day we tell them it's a competition from the time you walk in the building, meeting room, and on the practice field. Hey, Christian exploded last year. He's been a little bit limited out here mm -hmm. from what we can tell with the yellow jersey this spring. How has he been able to still mature through that this spring? 
Well, I can see him being more comfortable with what we're asking him to do, even in the, you know, the work he has out here and even in the meeting room, his just understanding of you know, offenses, how they're trying to attack us. And I think he's taking that next step. And I'm looking for you know, big things for him this year. And I've been encouraged with what he's done. I talked to Chris Jackson yesterday. And the, the last year, he sort of filled in where there was a role mm-hmm. available on Correct. Sunday. Can he create a little bit more of a specific role for himself on this team right now? Well, Chris has been good. He's been a guy that has some versatility. He can play inside, can play outside. So, you know, and that's been good for him. He's a smart guy. He's tough. He's fast. He can run. So he's he's been good for us. And then his deal is he's no whatever we ask him to do, he's been willing to do. And he's just taking advantage of all the opportunities he's had. And he had a chance to come in his first year and play a lot of football for us. So he's another guy in that mix, like you're talking about, just competing for a role. What have you seen from Rogers so far? A guy that came in every day from the time, you know, he got here and worked. Um, great attention to detail. He, high care factor. Um, he puts in the time away from the building, and you know you can coach him hard, and he'll take it, and he goes out there and competes. To, to learn it, given the limitations he faced last year. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of things going on, and that's the same for a lot of players. You know, a lot of uh, obstacles and a lot of distractions, and and things that can take their minds away from the game. I think for Bud, this is going to be a, a huge off season, a huge training camp coming up once again, just to get back in the scheme of things and year two for any player um, should be better with the scheme and should be better and more comfortable in the system so um, we'll just keep pressing what's next to him about hey do you like this or i had this idea what do you think or do you have ideas that we can put in the put in the scheme here absolutely maybe not so much a scheme maybe more technique um, but any guy that has experience that have done it for a long time, those are open conversations. You know, find ways to get them better, and that's the, that's the name of the game, just helping them improve. Is this the ideal time to implement stuff like that before training camp starts, before they go on break, for lack of a better term? Yeah, you know, you want them to, to leave here the next five weeks and be able to, to sharpen those tools and, and add some things or maybe take some things away, and then training camp is where you hone in on it and you get the scheme going, and then you're in season. So, um, absolutely yesterday about you know maybe a priority is trying to find a way to create some more of those turnovers by reaching you know for a quarterback has that been kind of a priority in some of these off-season drills absolutely I mean that's uh, it was embarrassing last year to be honest with you we got um, those guys did a an excellent job getting to the quarterback but we just we got to be able to change the game so heavy emphasis this year we, we spent a lot of time talking about it spent a lot of time showing clips and we're absolutely spending a lot of time working it I mean, I guess if it gets a little better, really great chance for you guys considering how often you did get to the quarterback anyway. Right? Yeah, and that's on them. I mean, they're, they're, those guys go really hard up front. They rush well together and hope to take a step in that direction again this year. But we got to be able to change the game when we get to the quarterback that many times. Well, Weaver, I know you talked a little bit about him last week as well. What, what's important for him maybe at the start of camp to try to build his way up for – you know, to try to make this roster and have an impact. Yeah, I think for him, just once again, his pad level is always going to be a challenge, um, but just getting more comfortable with the playbook. You know, he started out training camp. We had him early last year as a rookie, came through training camp and then got hurt early in the season. And uh, we kind of took his mind a little bit off of the scheme and implemented it more towards and uh, what's going on in the game and helped him to study the game. And now it's bringing him back, right, and getting him ready um, to play in our system and, and getting him caught up there. So he's doing a great job. It's just day-by-day improvement. Is he one of those guys where you could kind of use him similar to how you use Autry as far as like handing the dirt as well as standing up? Would you like to get back to that with him? Yeah, I mean, we're going to try a bunch of different things with a bunch of different players. You know, I'm not exactly sure where Weave is going to end up. He's, uh, But I know wherever we put him, he's going to do a great job. As, uh, speaking of Danico, I know he kind of switched back and forth a little bit too last year. Do you expect him similar role or, or maybe more, you know, edge inside uh, this year? Do you know? It'll probably be uh, similar to last year, and then you know we'll see um, where he's at and how he's doing, and as the season progresses, and he's another guy that we can stick him anywhere, and he'll do a great job. Yesterday. It was good. It was good to have the whole group together. You know, to be out on the field with the whole group uh, for the first time was awesome. Uh, again, obviously he's been working, so it's good for the group to see that he's been working as well. Because sometimes, you know, we all wonder what people are doing, but they can see that he's been working. Uh, obviously, he has a, a great presence among the group, and they they look to him as a leader. So it was good to have him back out there. Along those lines, like. 
when he's not only coming back, but, but taking a majority of the snaps uh, right away and then doing, you know, gassers during any available break? What, what kind of, you know, example, I guess, does, does that set? Well, he, he's earned the reps, you know, uh, based on what he's done. Um, and and he's, he's earned the right to be a starter. So when he gets back, that's kind of his role. Uh, and so he works through the offseason so that he's prepared for that. And then when he gets out and run gases, you know, he's a team guy. And uh, so he's going to work on his conditioning uh, here, just like the rest of the guys that are here. So he, he goes and do, goes and does it. From your conversations with him, have you noticed, like, is there kind of like a, an extra edge that, that he has uh, in coming back from that injury? He, he, he's he's working. Uh, obviously, he doesn't talk a whole lot about it, and, and I don't ask him about it. You know, um, we start over. You know, uh, every year is a new year. Every team's a new team. And he understands that what has been accomplished in the past is in the past. So it's not what you did last year. It's what are you going to do now going forward. And so we, we talked to him about that. Rabes talks to him about that. And he had that in his background from his college days. It was kind of that way. Alabama, right? Everything, it's a new year. We start all over again. You got to, what you did in the past means nothing. 